Hi and welcome to the channel. Today we get to explore the fascinating book Life Lessons from a Brain Surgeon by Dr. Rahul Jandiao. Dr. Jandiao is a prominent neurosurgeon as well as a scientist who carries out research into the inner works of brain chemistry and novel surgical techniques. He shares his insight into how simple strategies can keep the brain healthy and how we can optimize our brain power over the long term. I have simplified some of the fascinating facts for this video and I hope you enjoy them. Firstly, we explore a fascinating case by Dr. Jandiao where he had to carry out brain surgery in a bilingual patient. Midway through the surgery, the patient was woken up while the brain was still exposed so that Dr. Jandiao could ask the patient to repeat words in English and Spanish in order to map out a safe path to remove a tumour. This was how he could protect the language centres of the brain. Unfortunately, the surgery had to be repeated when the tumour returned, and the same process was done again. But this time, Dr. Jandiao found that the parts of the brain that coded for different languages actually changed since the first surgery. The big takeaway from this is that the brain is always evolving, and the term commonly used is plasticity, the ability to adapt and change. Essentially, the brain is a muscle, and you either train it to enhance it, or waste it and you will lose it. Yes, there are actually scientific studies that demonstrate that the cells or neurons in the brain actually die and get eliminated if not used. These are some strategies to keep the brain engaged and stimulated. 1. Learn a second language or more. British researchers have found that candidates who were bilingual showed better ability to stay focused and concentrate. In addition, children who were bilingual had enhanced ability to learn a primary language faster. Lastly, knowing more languages has been shown to delay the onset of dementia. So, Dr. Jandial encourages the learning and usage of more languages to build brain power and cognitive reserve. Number two is to use your non-dominant hand. This will force the brain to recruit idle cells to work. One could perhaps play a sport that required both hands, such as basketball, or learn a musical instrument such as the piano. The next part of the book explores the things that we can do to nourish the brain and ultimately unleash its true potential. Briefly, it can be broken down into breathing, sleep, and nutrition. Dr. Jandial explains how regular breathing is controlled by the subconscious part of the brain, so we breathe without thinking. But have you noticed that our breath is normally fairly shallow and rapid? Instead, Dr. Jandial suggests mindful breathing. A prominent study showed that candidates who practiced mindful breathing for two weeks demonstrated better control over the emotive part of the brain when exposed to disturbing and emotionally provocative photographs. Mindful breathing actually strengthens the connection between both our conscious and subconscious center, thus altering the neurobiology to lead to a calmer and more tranquil outlook. A simple mindful breathing exercise takes about 10 to 15 minutes daily. You always use a count of four when you breathe in slowly, hold the breath, exhale slowly, and wait before inhale. This is coupled by mental focus and shutting out distractions, and why meditation is a good avenue to explore if you so desire. This is just one technique of mindful breathing. In fact, you could even explore what Wim Hof teaches with breathing techniques. It's easy to find him. Just Google the Iceman and you'll know what I'm referring to. Next, the importance of sleep. We know that sleep is essential for the body to rest. But during sleep, our brain actually keeps working. And one of the key functions that happens is that the brain starts to package short-term memories, i.e. what we've learned during the day, to be distributed to other parts of the brain for storage. This is why sleep is known to improve one's memory as well as problem-solving capacity. 
There are different recommendations for appropriate sleep lengths, but generally it is between 8 to 11 hours for younger children and 7 to 9 hours for grown adults. Some common strategies for a better night's sleep include 1. Having a consistent sleep schedule 2. Avoiding caffeine in the afternoon or evening 3. Limiting distractions such as phones and TV in the bedroom and 4. Limiting exposure to bright lights in the evening Dr. Jandial himself starts turning down lights around 8pm every evening Finally, the power of nutrition the basics of good diet revolves around fresh wholesome food such as fruits, veggies, whole grains and fish, while limiting processed foods such as sugars and fats. If you wish to explore this further, the Mediterranean Dash Intervention for Neurodegenerative Delay Diet or MIND diet has been supported by studies to help avoid mental decline such as Alzheimer's disease by 50%. I have left a link in the description if you wish to explore this. Also, it is suggested that occasional intermittent fasting that leads to a ketogenic diet is potentially beneficial. This is because ketones as a fuel source for brain cells tend to make the brain cells less excitable, hence reducing the risk of seizures. This may be used in conjunction with the MIND diet if one so wishes. Lastly, Dr. Jandial exposes the fallacy that pharmaceutical companies promote re brain foods or mind-enhancing vitamins. In fact, studies have shown that only oxygen, glucose and ketones get to the brain readily. This is followed by some fats, vitamins and minerals at very low levels. Nearly everything that the brain needs is actually built in-house. So, before you dig into your pockets and pay good money, Beware of any sales pitch that suggests eating any unproven brain food supplements. It is perhaps best to keep to the basics. Finally, Dr. Jandia warns against the use of drugs of any form due to the long-term impairments to brain function. He does, however, discuss the concept of microdosing, the use of psychedelic drugs such as LSD at very low levels. Apparently, at very low levels, these drugs temporarily expand the neural pathways within the brain to unleash unexpected creativity. In fact, Steve Jobs is fairly candid about his use of LSD as well. At most, the early studies suggest tiny amounts given in a controlled setting, not enough to cause hallucination, but equivalent to a single sip of wine, might help one's creative ability. But even then, Dr. Jandia warns that the jury is still out there as we do not know what the detrimental effects these drugs have in the brain. He suggests that one should perhaps stick to a safer and more conventional way to unleash their creativity, namely via exploration and social interaction. Exploration and adventure is particularly important for the growing brain, not just in young children but also in adults. Unstructured play and exploration engages and builds new connections at different parts of the brain. In older adults, social interactions keep the brain active and maintain cognitive ability. In short, this book highlights the simple and well-documented ways of developing and maintaining our brain health. What this book adds though is the actual insights and scientific studies to back up how some of these practices actually work at a biological and chemical level. I found this book to be an enjoyable read and Dr. Jandial's down-to-earth approach in explaining what can be a very complex topic makes the learning process all the more engaging. I hope you gained something from this video and if you did, please consider subscribing, commenting or leaving a like to help this channel grow. Until the next time, look after that very special organ that you have. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care and bye for now.